Great to see you. Well, I found that it's easier to recover the truth about interstellar space from the bottom of the Pacific Ocean than it is from government. Have we finally found proof of alien life? Not from gazing at the stars, but by diving to the deepest depths of the ocean? Harvard astrophysicist Avi Loeb believes he may have discovered the first tangible evidence of extraterrestrial technology. In 2014, sensors tracked a meteor hurtling over the Pacific at speeds of 110,000 miles per hour before impacting the ocean. Loeb led an expedition to recover fragments of this anomalous object, which he believes originated from outside our solar system. It was moving very fast, and I realized, together with my student Amir Siraj, that it was actually uh, faster than the escape speed from the sun, from the solar system. So it came into the solar system from outside. Among the seabed, they found metallic spheres made of unknown alloys, Tests indicate the material is over 14 billion years old. If proven to be alien artifacts, this would be one of the most monumental discoveries in human history. But many scientists remain skeptical. Join us as we dive into the thrilling controversy around Loeb's potential evidence of alien life from a meteor at the bottom of the Pacific. This discovery could radically transform our understanding of humanity's place in the universe. The Silver Star vessel set sail to Papua New Guinea recently with the goal of locating fragments from an unusual meteor that pounded into the planet in 2014. Tracked by a U.S. government sensor nearby, the meteorite's velocity was recorded at over 110,000 miles per hour, or 177,000 kilometers per hour, while NASA's Center for Near-Earth Object Studies detected its descent. Eventually, the meteorite made an impact, plunging into the ocean about 53 miles or 85 kilometers away from the shore. During the course of two weeks, the crew meticulously searched through more than 100 miles of the ocean floor, ultimately locating spheres made of a metallic substance unlike any known alloy within our solar system. Taking into account its great velocity and path as it entered Earth's atmosphere, Loeb suggests that the entity, referred to as Interstellar Meteor, one or IM-1 by him, develops from a different star system. He believes that there is a possibility that this object might contain alien technosignatures, which could indicate technological artifacts crafted by beings from beyond our planet. Despite the minuscule size of these spheres, which necessitates the utilization of a microscope for observation, a comprehensive examination will come in very handy to really understand their origins as either a natural object or some form of technology. If the findings indicate that the objects are technological in nature, they have the potential to be the first solid evidence of extraterrestrial life as discovered by humanity. We'd have found aliens in short. Avi Loeb, a professor and astrophysicist from Harvard University who led the expedition as its chief scientist, commented, Our discoveries introduce a novel frontier in astronomy, shifting the focus from telescope to microscopes in our quest to explore what lies beyond our solar system. Loeb has previously revealed his view regarding the potential presence of extraterrestrial technology within our solar system. Five years ago, he collaborated with fellow Harvard researcher Shmuel Biley to propose that Yumuamua, a peculiar interstellar object that passed through our solar system in late 2017, could be an interstellar object. Their paper discussing the object got significant media attention and received both support and criticism from the scientific community. With the help of crypto millionaire Charles Hoskinson, Loeb is leading an expedition into the Pacific Ocean to recover IM-1, the interstellar meteor. So far, the team has found more than 50 small magnetic spherules made of iron, magnesium, and titanium that might belong to the meteor. Loeb recently wrote that these spherules were anomalous due to their relatively low nickel content, which is common in meteorites. He expressed his excitement in a recent interview saying that this expedition has been the most exhilarating experience of his scientific career. However, many scientists remain skeptical about the origin of these spherules. Some people think that these specific pellets 
might not be connected to the 2014 meteor at all. Peter Brown, who studies meteorites at the University of Western Ontario, says that magnetic rakes used to search the ocean floor have been able to find extraterrestrial spherules for over a century. Over millions of years, these tiny bits of molten metal have accumulated all over the globe, deposited by meteors as they fly through space. The complexity of ocean currents and sedimentary movements makes it nearly impossible to pinpoint the exact moment of the spherules' formation. Basically, it's like looking for a needle in a haystack. Brown and his co-authors recently wrote a paper challenging IM-1's astronomical origins. The idea that the meteor came from outside our solar system is based on its high speed of entry into Earth's atmosphere. However, Brown believes that government sensors often overestimate speed, especially at higher speeds. A lower speed would also explain the object's strange brightness profile, which doesn't match up with what people would expect from a metallic meteor moving at over 100,000 miles per hour or 160,000 kilometers per hour. However, this doesn't completely rule out the possibility that the meteorite came from interstellar space. It just means that we don't know for sure yet. Despite Brown's personal 20-year search for an interstellar immediate impact on Earth, no such impacts have been confirmed. The majority of academics remain skeptical when it comes to the idea of extraterrestrial technology. Brown acknowledges that it would be an incredibly thrilling event, but he lacks any compelling evidence to back up such a wild theory. Through it all, it goes without saying that the pursuit of an interstellar meteor will most definitely lead to unexpected discoveries. The fragments that the team unearthed are believed to have come from a meteorite approximately the size of a basketball. Loeb insists that the meteor originated from beyond our solar system, traveling at a velocity twice that of most stars in the vicinity of the sun. Even though it was too small for telescopes to see through sunlight reflection, its collision with Earth made a bright fireball that was recorded by sensors belonging to the U.S. government. In 2019, Loeb, in collaboration with Harvard undergraduate Amir Siraj, identified the meteor's interstellar origin in a published paper. Then, in 2022, the U.S. Space Command formally confirmed, in a letter to NASA, that the object, designated as the Interstellar Meteor IM-1, did in fact originate from a different solar system. The $1.5 million expedition conducted to recover remnants of the meteor's explosion on the Pacific Ocean floor near Manus Island in Papua New Guinea was underway between June 14th and June 28th. As mentioned before, the crew extensively searched the ocean floor using a sled equipped with magnets attached to their boat. It took several days to get the magnetic sled to the ocean floor and a few more days to figure out what the materials were made of along the meteor's path, which was about 53 miles off the Manus Island coast. A frequent blogger of his findings, Loeb shared in a Medium.com post on scooping the magnets, we found that the most prevalent material attached to them was a black powder of volcanic ash. But after spending a week at sea, the long-awaited breakthrough finally happened. A team member, observing through a microscope, spotted a beautiful metallic marble of sub-millimeter size and sub-milligram mass. Following this discovery, the team continued to search for additional spherules. According to Loeb, the preliminary examination of the sphere's chemical makeup suggests that they are not in sync with commonly used alloys or natural meteorites found within our solar system. The team escorted the spheres to the Harvard College Observatory for further examination. Scientists aim to address the fundamental inquiry of whether the meteor's origin is a result of natural processes or whether it was manufactured through artificial means. In simpler terms, they are investigating whether it is the remnants of an alien spacecraft. Charles Hoskinson, who funded the expedition, commented on the findings saying, We've been looking for something the size of a watermelon in the middle of the Pacific Ocean and somehow managed to find some fragments. This operation has produced excellent science, and I hope it captures the imagination of the general public for the pursuit of intelligent life in the universe. The expedition team recently met for its first meeting, which will help them prepare a scientific paper that will explain the findings, as Loeb said. The team will work with three research facilities at Harvard and the University of California, Berkeley, to do a preliminary evaluation. The results of these investigations will be incorporated 
into a piece that's slated for publication in a peer-reviewed publication in the upcoming month. Loleb is aware of how big this discovery could be and how it could change how we think about the universe and our place in it. After returning from the expedition, Loeb received a black plastic suitcase containing the materials via FedEx, revealing the historical significance. For the first time, mankind owns materials from a meter-tall, non-solar system object and acknowledged interstellar meteor. He expressed that FedEx was the final stage of a journey that this package may have undertaken for billions of years through interstellar space before reaching my doorstep. Loleb sees the mission as a model of how science should be done, driven by genuine curiosity and wonder, tackling issues of significant public interest, and sifting through evidence to discover the truth. Even though they had to deal with a lot of challenges, the team of professionals was able to get these results. In Avi Loeb's latest blog, he has been studying the initial results from studying the spherules collected during the expedition. Upon their return to the United States, the team toured UC Berkeley and utilized electron microscope scanning to analyze these spherical objects. Further analysis using advanced instruments is planned at Harvard. The team's analysis revealed distinct differences between the spherules collected along the meteor's path compared to those from the control zone. X-ray fluorescence aboard the vessel showed the meteor spherules were composed primarily of iron, about 84%, with no nickel content. Additionally, they contain trace elements like silicon, magnesium, and titanium in smaller amount. Intriguingly, the meteor spherules exhibited signs of rapid heating, with surface dendrites indicating the exceptionally high temperatures reached during the fireball event. Moreover, the spherules had a layered Matryoshka doll-like structure, suggesting a hierarchical merging of molten droplets as they fused together during the explosion. The comprehensive examination uncovered unique properties and compositions pointing to an extraterrestrial origin. They used a technique called mass spectroscopy to detect the presence of uranium and lead in the spherules. By studying the isotopes and their decay products, they were able to calculate the age of the spherules using two different methods. They found that two spherules from the meteor path are about as old as the universe, around 14 billion years. The estimated age of the background spherule is a few billion years, similar to that of the solar system. Scientists will keep looking to see if the spherules are different from the materials in our solar system. These discoveries provide further evidence that IM-1 came from outside our solar system. This analysis has opened up new questions about IM-1's origins and nature. So, what's next for the research team? Loleb writes in his report, In my last class of the spring semester at Harvard University, I asked my students for advice on what to do if we find an extraterrestrial gadget. Half of the class recommended pressing buttons on it, and the other half expressed caution. When one of the students asked, What would you do, Professor Loeb? I replied, I will bring it to a laboratory and study it before engaging with it. Loleb is planning a follow-up expedition for spring 2024 to search for more definitive evidence on whether IM-1 is natural or technological. The truth may be found two kilometers beneath the ocean in the form of alien technology, and if such a device exists, the scientists will stop at nothing to find it. Loeb believes the spherules may lead them to a larger relic that could reveal key insights on IM-1's origins. While Loeb's expertise is in astrophysics, he continues leading the expeditions due to the profound implications for humanity. As written by Loeb in a previous blog post, any scientific knowledge about our cosmic environment should be shared by all humans because it does not adhere to national borders. All of us should know whether we have neighbors in order to adapt to the interstellar reality that surrounds us. So, knowledge is essential for guiding the long-term survival of humanity. If indisputable evidence for a technological relic from an extraterrestrial civilization surfaces in 2024, my fellow Earthlings, we are not alone. So, what do you think? What are these spherules? And are they technological in nature? Let us know in the comments below, and as always, thanks for watching!